I have a presentation. Greetings everyone tonight. I'm here to present a topic. Um, it's common to all of us. Nothing that we have not really experienced in life, but nevertheless, I would like to just um, bring our attention really to a little or refresh our attention a little to this area. And I have a slide on the computer. I don't know how many of you can really see it clearly, but it is saying the impact of needs on one's physical, psychological well physical and psychological well-being, which can also lead to abuse, different forms of abuse. So then just looking at needs. And before I go into even begin looking at the needs, because all of us have needs at one point or another in our lives, you know what it is, what needs are, whether it be need for food, for dirt, for water, or whatever, we all have a desire or burning intense um, for need. And then thought here said, to understand yourself is a great privilege. To know yourself is a precious gift. To know others is a blessing. He who conquers other is strong, but he who conquers himself is mighty. To love and to feel good about oneself is a must. And it continues by saying, knowledge can make you powerful, but power without knowledge makes you foolish. And the other part of it says, um, look for the good in others and praise it. Don't amplify the negatives. Be grateful for our accomplishments and also for the small benefits one obtained. Give thanks for life and the struggles we encounter gradually or daily, or whenever we encounter these struggles. And the last part of it says now, they are what break us and make us into strong vessels. So our struggles that we encounter is what break us or make us into strong individuals, or we can call it vessels. And now I look at um, quickly about the needs. Like I said early on, all of us have needs at one point or another. From a little baby, a toddler just born, all of us were born as infants, and we had needs. We could not attend to our own needs, but our parents at one point or another had to oversight us, look at us, take care of us, protect us from bite, insect bite, ensure that we are well fed, that we are well cared for, because what? We had needs that we could not you know, give to our, we couldn't take care of ourselves from those early stages. But as we go from day to day and we grow from one stage to another, we become mature and gradually we learn to attend to our own needs. So now that we are, we are adults now, we know how to deal with our needs. And just looking at needs here, here needs are not just wanting clothes or food or whatever but there are different types of needs that everyone has whether or not we recognize it we all have needs psychological needs basic needs sociological needs and the rest of it as i go into so then we have needs that we need to attend to and here it, it says as a result of our needs or our desires, which, because when we think of the, the, the needs, needs are tied to our emotions and our feelings. So when we feel for something, it means that we have a need for that thing. If we are thirsty, it means that we feel for some water or some drinks and we have need for it. So wherever we get, go and get water from, we're going to go to the extreme to get it because there's a burning desire for that thirst, to quench that thirst. Likewise, if we are hungry, we are going to try to find food to, you know, to satisfy that desire. If we are naked and we are in our right mind, then we will clothe ourselves. But persons who are of unsound mind will go on the street 
with those needs unmet. And it doesn't matter to them if they are naked or not, because well, they are not in their right mind. So unmet needs also is a very important factor in looking at how we deal with our needs as we go from day to day. Um, yes, so we, we understand each other and we know how to respond to each other's needs and behaviors or actions. I mentioned about infants, a little, a little toddler. If a toddler is going in danger, he doesn't know himself what the danger that he's going through. And as I usually tell you, I remember some years ago, when I was a little girl, maybe about five, what, about three years of age, um, I remember one day um, I was creeping, put it that way. Couldn't walk properly, but I remember at the age of about three years of age. And when I was in that yard, the big um, yard, put it that way, I saw a, a group of cows over a fence, but I could not, um, as in that early stage and that tender stage I was in, I didn't realize because there was these the, the big cows and as a little baby, I, I didn't really understand what does that mean. And we were out in the, my, my, my parents were nearby, yes, but I was out there, you know, in, I mean, in front of them. And then I saw that this big mother cow coming towards me over the fence, yes, but I they couldn't understand what does that mean. And I started to cry and trying to escape from that big cow, I fell. And but there was a, 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 a fire that some guys had lit in the yard. And while I was running, what I mean, I fell in the fire. And until this day, I, every time I look at my knee, I can remember that incident where as a little baby, three um, years old or so, I fell in that fire. I was there crying. And then you know, my mother went and took me out of the fire. It's a real story I'm telling about, not a fantasy. And my mother came and took me out and the rest is history. So I'm saying the young baby there wouldn't know their danger even though they are in need of protection or whatever. But the, the good thing about it is that I was protected. I was taken out of it. I didn't get burned too food badly, but then, you know, I was, I, was, I was protected. So our needs there are very, very important. And our needs then can be both physical, where we need somebody to protect us. Our needs can be psychological, and it can be a, a other areas of needs, which I'm going to go into shortly. It is therefore important to find out what makes a person feel down. When, we, when our needs are not met, it is important to find out what caused the person's need not to be met. Okay. Our needs here may be basic, emotional, and physical, likewise psychological, and many times we have to resort, even as adults, to the theological needs, because all of us have our theological or the biblical needs, and that's why we are Christians, because if we didn't have need for Christ and, you know, the theology part of it, then we would not even know about serving God. So it's a basic and a great need, which all of us need to aspire to, even present or not the same, need to garn on that type of need, the theological need. Here also I mentioned earlier about unmet needs. When persons' needs are not met, so if the physical needs are not met and the psychological needs are not met, the needs will automatically be unmet. And when unmet um, our emotional needs, these can make a person very, very unhappy. Also, emotionally sick. They can become unhealthy. They cannot function because what? They are working on their needs, which are not met. And they are striving to fulfill these needs. Sometimes it takes them years to accomplish this desire. A person may want something from other young stage in life. They didn't get to do it. And therefore they aspire to it. They see others doing it. And they, 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 they crave to do it because what? It's an unmet need in their life. Sometimes they go to the extreme to get it, yes? And after a while, they realize it was the work by going to that length to get that need. But gradually, granted, they, they aspire and they actually they get their need. 
So it is important to ensure that our needs are met and not just going along with unmet need, which are going to later on lead to abuse and other you know, disastrous um, occurrences. Looking at um, Abraham Maslow's, Abraham Maslow here, he is a, a famous humanistic psychologist. He looks at the, the human aspects of um, people's lives. So here, Maslow, Abraham Maslow, he designed a pyramid, something almost looked like a cone. And he designed it to highlight the various forms of needs that people um, experience in life. So he pointed out that the psychological needs and the safety needs are the most basic of important, sorry, basic or important for survival. So therefore the psychological needs are very, very important for one per for a person's function. And the safety needs, like I mentioned earlier, if you don't feel safe as, um, as well as a child or a, an, an adult, you're not going to function properly. If you are going to work and you have to take a taxi, for example, and you do not trust the driver, and you don't even trust the persons who are in that vehicle, you're not one to want to go into that vehicle. Right? So you have to feel safe before you go into that situation. So the psychological needs and the safety needs are very important. The basic needs also are important because they are needs for survival. Everybody wants to, to feel accomplished. Everybody wants to survive in life. So therefore, Abraham Maslow, Abraham Maslow, he highlighted these here, these era, and he called his hierarchy coming from one in and top to the bottom. So he says, number one, which is the basic needs now. The basic needs are food, shelter, and clothing. So if you do not have food to eat, you are going to get, you know, deprived. You are going to be, you know, famished. You're not, you're, you're, you're hungry. You don't have enough food to eat. You're going to start to walk. Maybe some like, or oh, some people, we see them eating from garbage bins because what? Their, their basic needs are not met. Their basic needs cannot be met because of their status in life. They're not working. They become mentally deranged. And therefore, they cannot um, fulfill their own needs or desires. And therefore, they start walking on the street and they start to do the brave things. They were naked, and it to them is nothing. But what? Persons who are in their right mind, looking at them, know that their basic needs were not met. And that's what caused them possibly to be in that deranged state. Then, after the Maslow basic needs, here it says the next one is psychological needs, like I was really talking about a while ago. And these psychological needs are not just protection from whatever, but the psychological needs are very inclusive. It includes a whole lot of other areas. Maslow did not identify a lot of areas in his psychological need because here he talk about the need for survival. He talk about the needs of eating, for drinking, which are still part of the basic needs. He talk about rest, rest. You need to sleep, yes. You need rest, yes. You need protection, yes, like I mentioned earlier. And if you are cold, you need warmth. So apart from these, there are other psychological needs which people need to feel you know, accomplished in life and to feel that they are you know, striving and reaching somewhere. So the psychological needs also include the area of inclusion. Sometimes people want to feel important. So they want to feel included in what is going on. So sometimes you will see sometimes a party is taking place and people go and they join the party, whether or not they were invited, but they want to be a part of that, of what is that occurrence. They may see something is happening and because they want to feel important, they may go and they may attach themselves. So attachment, belongingness, you want to feel that they are a part of a society, a part of a group, a part of a network, 
and a part of all other things. They want to feel accepted. You see, they want to feel um, a level of autonomy, a level of, you know, you know, you own something. You don't want to go into life and know that you don't have nowhere to sleep. You don't have even a pair of shoes on your feet. You don't have something that you really own. So people want to feel a sense of, of autonomy, freedom, you know, and acceptance and all of these things. People want to feel a level of competence. A sense of identity. So people know who exactly they are. And these are all psychological needs. Mark you, everybody may not be in the same way because some persons may suppress their desire for these things. Some people, they, they may feel actualized in, you know, just a few things. So they are not really gravitating to, the, 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 I mean, what the normal person or they really run down, put it that way. So they, they, they don't have to really go to extreme to really accomplish all these things, depend on their level of actualization. So the, the, the psychological needs here are very, very important, like Maslow identified. There is also the safety need which people want to feel. And I mentioned this earlier on, the arm and danger. People don't want to know that they are in danger or whatever. So they, 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 they want to know that, that need there is accomplished. I mentioned about the belonging also. People want to know that they feel accepted. So if, a, if someone is in a family, for example, and they are not accepted in the family, then it means that they are going to feel left out. And it don't have to be a family either. If people are in a particular setting, whether school or wherever, children, and that is why sometimes we see so much deviant behaviors in school. I see just recently on the internet, the news rather, where um, school just resumed, like we all know face-to-face -face school. And we saw, we had, I think two schools had um, very sad occurrences with students. Because what? Students who were at home for two years in a pandemic, going back to school, see friends possibly, uh, meet, meeting with other new friends. Sometimes they feel left out. And it, it brings negative deviant behaviors. And sometimes it's sad to say the results of these behaviors are, you know, you know, not what people desire or offer. But what we are seeing here is that we should strive to ensure that our needs are being met in one way or another. And we're not going to go overboard to really ensure that our needs are met, are met, but we're going to try to stay within our own you know, limits. So whatever we can deal with, we deal with it to ensure that we, as we, we strive and yes, we acquire the level of psychological needs that is relevant to our um, maintaining physical and good well-being. I also look, continue a little bit more on the belonging need. Belonging need involves love, love and acceptance. And these days, everybody needs a form of love in whatever form it is. And if it is, if it is missing, then it is going to cause deviant behavior and sometimes violence, it caused conflicts, it caused power, it caused a whole lot of things. We see, for example, even in Russia and, you know, Ukraine, with that war that is going on over there. And a lot of it, I'm not going to really go into details to tell, I mean, the, the full source of it because it's... it's well, well, I'm a lover. Yes. Somebody here, Mike, is need to be on me. Yeah, so I'm saying that sometimes people behave certain ways and they realize that um, the reason why they do it is because of unmet needs. And because the needs are not met, then, I mean, these behaviors occur. But what we can do is try to, you know, deal with our um, needs as we go along, as we recognize what is causing our needs and what the deficiency of our needs also, we try to, to deal with them. So um, 
lack of love and acceptance can result in a number of deviant behaviors and psychological maladjustment among individuals if they feel neglected or abandoned. Esteem needs is also important, like I mentioned earlier. People want to feel a level of pride and self-esteem. So people don't want you know, to walk on the street with, you know, half naked and barefooted. You want to have self-esteem, you know, and you want to feel a level of you know, acceptance. It is important that every human being love and respect himself or herself. So before even seeking acceptance from other persons, it is good for persons to try to love themselves, care for yourselves. And then when you do that, when we do that, then we eventually get um, acceptance from others. And sometimes the, the, the acceptance or, or, or lack of acceptance is as a result of many, many other things. Because sometimes it, it's like, uh, um, it says children live what they learn. And if a person um, lacks certain things, they cannot give it. If a person lacks love, they cannot give love. If a person deals with hatred, then they cannot give love. So it means that persons have to, to strive first to accept themselves, and then they will be able to deal with other persons and accept other persons likewise. So poor self-esteem allows an individual to be careless and to feel worthless at times. On the other hand, high self-esteem will also help you to plan achievable goals and work towards obtaining them. So it, it, it is advisable that we all try to build our self-esteem, not going over, we're not going to extremes, but we try in whatever way we can to build our self-esteem and our self-image so we can feel better and feel um, more good about ourselves. Self-actualization also. This is the highest level on the pyramid. Maslow, he said that in, in every 10 persons, in every 10 persons that feel this need intensely, though most people concentrate on other ones, the self-actualization includes higher and more strict objectives, such as justice, perfection, goodness, individuality, and truth. So a person to be, a per, to be fully actualized in yourself, a person should be able to, I mean, achieve your objectives, feel a level of justice, and you can give justice likewise. You feel good about yourselves, and you can feel good about other persons likewise. And you must uh, uh, have a sense of truth within yourself, and you can be able to impart truth to other people. Because if you are not a truthful person or a trustworthy person, you cannot impart it to other person through whatever means you would like to. When these various needs are fulfilled, then the individual will experience a sense of fulfillment. And it says, or here also. Frustration, if a person doesn't um, achieve his aims or objectives and these needs, the psychological needs or the basic needs or the, you know, the esteem needs or whatever, if you don't act on achieve it, then you are going to go into a level of frustration. You are going to go into a level of depression. And if you are in frustration or depression, it means that you cannot function properly. Whether on the job, whether at home, whether at school, wherever in your homes or whether you cannot function effectively if you become frustrated, if you become depressed, if you become demoralized, if you become demotivated, then you cannot function effectively because you are not operating at your best. Okay. Here, how we can help to improve ourselves. It says, in dealing with these emotional needs, an individual should strive to deal with some of these steps. Try talking out your problem. If you have a problem, you can't deal with it. Find somebody who you can, you can identify with, whether or your teammates, whether or, you know, a, a relative, whoever you can find to talk about your issue with. Try talking out the problem 
with someone who you understand and trust. Someone who is not involved in other areas. Someone who you trust and, and you can do positive self-talk with. You know, the person that's going to go and discuss your problem with somebody else. And then you probably become a table talk. No, you, 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 you discuss it with somebody who you are, you are confident will be able to guide you and somebody who can help to secure and help you to, to really build your self-esteem and correct your needs here. Set realistic, achievable goals. Work towards achieving them. Substitute negative thoughts with positive ones. They will make you feel stronger. Force yourself out of a mood that makes you angry or depressed or worried. Laugh. And laughter is one of the best medicines, as it is said. Sometimes people just laugh. And so I might say laugh and say, wow, that person is crazy. That person is getting kinky, mad. Because what? Here they are laughing. But if a person can really realize that just by laughing at their own, you know, fallacy, your own stupidity. Sometimes you do some simple little things. And when you look at it, you say, no, what I've done was really simple. You know, what I what the, you know, it's very funny. And you get a joke out of it, you know? And somebody might say, laugh at your own joke and say, very stupid. But within yourself, you are building strength because you know that you are building up yourself psychologically and physically. Because if you are depressed, you're not going to eat, you'll, be, you'll stop eating. You're not going to pay attention to your diet. And if you normally do your exercise, you only become depressed. You don't feel like going out of the house. You don't even feel like doing anything at all. Because what? You become depressed. You become stressed. You become worried. You become a lot of things start happening. But what on? When you realize what the state of that you're in and what caused your, that your, your, your need to be unmet, then you will try to deal with it. And by dealing with it, you become more efficient and then you'll be able to, to deal with your situation more capably. Exercise regularly. So you laugh at yourself. Yes, the funniest thing you can remember. You make some jokes. Funny thing, laugh. Then you exercise. Exercise is a very good one. Exercise, you can stand on one side and exercise. You can do anything, many, many things rather, forms of exercise, even in a small space. You don't have to go out the street really to exercise. You can just swing your hands, swing them up in the air, around, you can skip, you can do anything you want. You can bend, you can stretch. It's a form of exercise. And when you do that, then you find that the, the, the blood flow starts to increase. Your thought process starts to improve. The negative thoughts start to leave and the positive ones start coming in. What you never used to do positively, you'll finally start doing it because what? Your body starts to rejuvenate. You start to get energy, start to come in your system. You start to get strength. You start to, you know, overcome the weaknesses. And therefore, you start to become, you know, capable again. Because what? Your needs are coming back to realization. So do exercise and eat well. If, if someone has caused you to be angry, try not to attack the person, but attack the problem instead. So if you... Your needs were not met basically because someone hurt you and you couldn't think straight and you started to think a while because you spend most of the time thinking yeah, what the person does to you instead of you know moving past past your past. Try to move past your past. So if you have that negative experience and somebody causes you to, to really keep on, you know, bringing back those negative thoughts, try to move past your past by doing the positive things. And when you do the positive things, then it means that you'll be able to think straight again. And your energy will come back, your resilience will come back, your coping skills will come back, and all of those. I was seeing an even an article about what's going on in Russia. And they were telling about, <laughs> even about the Russia. I don't really want to go into it still, really. But they were telling one instance where when he just got a job, when the, the, the president over there, he just got a job. And when he started out, what he used to do, 
and old people build up confidence in him. And after a while, when they realized things started to turn differently, they were disappointed, yes, but they were in a system where they couldn't do much about it. So they had to just continue, you see? And we see even the, the country now has been attacked. That, that, that president here is getting all the accolades because of his, his strength, because of his dynamism, because of his energy. When you see a country is devastated and that person is, has the strength to really, you know, say, okay, I will, you know, put peace, let peace reign. It means that that person is not for war. And at the end of it, you know, the person who, who made it for war, that person started to come down all the ice stand, and the dream as you hear that the war ceased. Yeah, because what? Some things are made the elements. Yeah, so it's meant to hear fully that because the, 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 um, the, the things start to go back, all the targets that were there start to depart, they start going back where they were coming from, and we may soon hear fully that the war has gone because God is a God who reverses wars. And therefore, when we are in a situation, like I was saying early on, that somebody has caused us to become angry or whatever, do not vent on those persons. Vent or talk on you know, the problem that we can, what we can do to change our situation. Think how we can attack the problem that caused us to be depressed, not the individual. When we attack the problem or the situation, then we'll be stronger to deal with ourselves and we'll understand the persons who cause us to behave the way we do. And you'll we'll be better able to deal with the world and what we are facing in our daily life, life as we go along. And the air in front it says also, you can also go into silence and do reflection. Going to silence doesn't mean that all right, we don't give people silent treatment because the silent treatment that sometimes we give the people can make them more bitter. Sometimes we give people silent treatment by ignoring them and avoiding them. And when we avoid them, they cannot deal with the silence and they become of their rockers because we're going to silence and leave them there in ignorance and in arrogance also. So the silent, the, the going into silence here is not necessarily serving the silence to people, but doing the silence within ourselves, doing reflection, how we can help ourselves to be better. We look within ourselves to see if we can really um, change our situation. What the, if we have a fault, or we can change our faults. And by changing ourselves, sometimes we see the persons who offended us, they in the long run start to change themselves and everything take a different turn to for the positive. And it says, do not overreact. When we overreact, it's, it is showing that we have lost control and we, we go overboard. And when we go overboard, it means that other persons who don't understand what you are dealing with, will in turn go overboard likewise. Now here I'm gonna look at quickly how um, these psychological needs, our needs, and, and especially when they are unmet, not just the fulfilled needs, but when the unmet needs are there, how people can be impacted and become abusive. So here then it says, no matter how happy, or sad someone may be. They have moments when they, sorry, no matter how happy someone may seem, there are moments when you feel that you can add the cope. You can add, sometimes you feel that you don't have any confidence within yourself. Sometimes your feeling become overwhelmed. Sometimes there is level of uncertainty within you, right? And you can't deal with yourselves, but, when our, when our needs are met, then we will not fear that we are going to be abusive ourselves. But sometimes, when, like I said earlier, when person's needs are unmet, then sometimes they go off now into forms of abuse. And this is the dangerous part of it. Because if our psychological needs are the important ones and the psychological needs are not met, then what it means is that 
the unmet needs are going to be affected because we cannot deal with our psychological needs. Therefore, our unmet needs are going to escalate and people are going to start abuse other persons. And they, they, you, you can go to physical because there are different forms of abuse, such as physical and psychological and other. But for now, others look at the basic, sorry, the physical needs, sorry, the physical abuse and the psychological abuse that people can go through. We all know different types of physical abuse that people go through from time to time, whether from childhood or whether into adulthood, we know that people go through different forms of abuse. I can remember um, I, growing up as a young teen, um, in the here I was living, there was a neighbor and this neighbor had a son. This youth, this little youth, he was very brilliant, but uh, obviously he, he, his mother had him from a previous relationship, right? And when she got with in, in touch with, a, in connection rather, with a different one, she started having children, got married, and she started having children now with this other, other partner. And what she, she did, because she couldn't abandon that little boy outrightly, what she did, she started to abuse him. He was her first child, and she started to abuse him. So what she would do, because possibly she couldn't deal with her partner because he, she had a lot, a lot of children for him. And possibly she couldn't deal with him, maybe, I don't know. But she started to abuse, abuse the little boy. At the time, maybe he was about 10 years or so, eight to 10 years. And what she would do is tie him to a tree because he was there and she couldn't understand the dude because he was gifted, he was brilliant. Because when he did his comment, as far as I remember, he, he passed one of the top schools those days, right? And he passed one of the top schools. Granted, I just said to this school because but he got full scholarship, whereas all the other children didn't get all of that. And she would abuse up this youth, tie him to the tree, beat him, and whatever. But it, it turned on that after a while, the, the boy, he grew. Now when he became a man, I understand he went abroad, yes. I don't know this full history, but I heard that after a while that he grew, went abroad, and he had a family of his own, and he became, well, I don't know, like I said, I don't know much about that after, right? But the point is when people's psychological needs are not met, they tend to abuse other persons. So, so just like all that woman would be the little boy and tend the tree because she couldn't deal with her own self and her situation, she abused the, truth, the, the, the child. And let us not try to be like that situation. If we find that we have a situation we can't deal with, let us try to work at our, with ourselves little by little, gradually, do the various areas, like I said, feed ourselves well, do our exercises, and gradually we will come back to accept ourselves and our community, our well being, and know how to treat other persons. So I was talking here now about the, the physical need and the physical abuse, rather. And I use a little boy to show how people can abuse people physically. Just be, uh, beat them, destroy their self-image, call them derogatory names, do them things. It's physical abuse and it's also psychological abuse. So some areas of psychological abuse are when they blame people unnecessarily, you call them all type of words. You belittle them. You insult their intelligence. You humiliate them. You isolate them. You offer threats. You call name, name callings. With, oh, you know, trivializing. You know, you blame wrongful, like I said earlier on. You, you humiliate them. You even want to call um, gaslighting. And gaslighting is when you turn people unnecessary to make the person doubt their reality. So if a person feels good about themselves, are you trying to gaslight them? Not really to mean they this doesn't mean that you throw gas on them. No. Gaslighting here doesn't mean that you throw gas on the person. No way, not that. It means that you use words, you use harsh words, you use rough words. You, you, you yeah, to, to, to really let them feel insecure, to let them feel, you know, that they 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 they're they're they are not worthwhile. 
you know, they they lose their self worth when you do the, these type of things to them. So you belittle them, you criticize them unnecessarily, you undermine them, and you isolate them. Don't be that said already. So, so therefore, they feel unimportant. They feel irrelevant. They feel that they, they, there's no need. Some of them even want to live. And therefore, they start to abuse themselves. Sometimes you see children, they start cutting themselves. They start cutting themselves. And they start to do the same thing to other people because what? The children live what they learn. So what people do to them is what they eventually do to other persons. So in toning down, I would just say to us, let us strive to see that our needs remain intact. Let us try to see that our basic needs are on, sorry, are met on a gradual basis. Let us try to see that our psychological needs also are met on a regular basis. Our esteem needs, let us ensure that our esteem needs are likewise met. Our self-actualization needs are met. Because when we reach the top of the pyramid, when you actualize you, in whatever you do, a person, what a person does sometimes don't really act, affect you fully to the point where you are going to abuse yourself and other person. You feel good about yourself. You start to care yourself because what? You have reached the point where you can deal with yourself and help others to deal with themselves likewise. And like I said earlier on, because people sometimes behave these ways because people deal with them in certain ways. People deal with them aggressively and people deal with them in various, you know, dangerous ways. And therefore, they don't, they don't know to deal with themselves. As a result, they, are, they, they, they send out this and they put it off to other persons because what? They cannot deal with themselves. So let us try to accentuate positive thoughts. Let us try to feel good about ourselves. Let us try to, you know, help other persons to empower themselves. Let us try to maintain a stabilized life. Let us try, try to, you know, act, ensure that ourselves are maintained. Likewise, persons we deal with who we have power to help. And just one other thing I'm going to say here before I close up, I said the power of love, which is association and connection. And this is in, in, in closing. Love yourself and love God. Love yourself and love others as you love God. In meeting with God, he gives us reassurance. He gives us revelation. He gives us knowledge. He gives us wisdom. He gives us strength. He gives us power to overcome our weaknesses. So therefore, let us strive to trust God. Put our emphasis on things that pertains to God. The words of God are there, and they are there. And it is said that whoso glorified God, whoso offered praise rather, glorify God. So when we trust God, put our emphasis on what pertains to him, then he will in turn bless us and help us to maintain stable lives and whether psychologically, physically, or otherwise. God bless you in Jesus' name. At this time, I have come to a point where if there are anybody, sorry, if there's anybody who has a, a question you'd like to ask, you can either voice it verbally or you can put it in the chat. And if there are no um, persons, then we'll move on shortly. Okay. At this time, we are going to be closing. I don't see any response in the chat. So at this time, we are going to be closing. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for uh, being here with us tonight. We're going to close at this time. Let us bow our heads.
Eternal God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for tonight. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that information gone out over beneficial to someone in some way. Bless us as we close at this time. We ask in Jesus' name. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious and count in answer. Give you peace that all the people say. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. See you again on Thursday night for young people service.